Water, water everywhere, but not a swearing, spoilers, or opinion to be seen. Come on. And welcome to 250 Reasons to Stay Indoors. I'm Jordan. I'm Kieran. And I'm John. Oh, who the fuck are you? <laughs> oh, mother, bab, mother Lickers, I'm here. What? I'm, I'm out. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jordan's friend, John. Hi. This is my friend, John. Oh, okay. So I this am. is no Which one's is systematically friend. bringing my friends onto the show. <laughs> yeah, it oh, seems that like I either have no friends or I don't want to bring it my friends. It does kind of seem like that at the moment, yeah. doesn't it, Kieran? <laughs> <laughs> or like my friends don't want to come on the show. Or maybe, maybe I don't have, maybe the people who I'm thinking of, they're just not the right fit. Right, I right. Find the right, right. fit, you know. Because so far we've had Ben, your... Yara, and now John. Mm. Three of your friends. Yeah, it's, it's in that order as well in terms of appropriateness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's disputable. Um, <laughs> yeah, Kiara so, should be tough. <laughs> if this is your first episode, what a wonderful time you're about to have. <laughs> this is the podcast where we watch the IMDb top 250 films. We uh, let you know whether they were good or if they were not good or if you should stay indoors or go outside for them. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so what are we watching this week, Kieran? It's pretty self-explanatory, so if you don't get it, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this week, we are watching Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. We'll see. And it came out in the year 1998, and it's 143 on the list. Have I ever seen it before, Jordan? <laughs> well, no, well. no, I have never seen Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels before. I've heard of it, and <clears throat> um, I think it's just going to be a film about, like gangsters and guns and things and that's pretty much all i've got going for it it kind of sounds like that doesn't it yeah i got the impression that what with the rhyming scheme of lock stock i was like you know what maybe this is western american westerns right because it's like the whole like um making country songs and rhyming shit and they'd be like oh yeah that's captain lock stock or whatever. Or like oh, death. okay. I see where you... Something right. like that, you know. You lost me for a second there. I had no idea what you were Just about range you back in at the end. Have like, you... country songs have rhyming words. <laughs> and, you know, lock stock, that rhymes. Hence. So it must be a song. And a western, obviously. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Jordan, have you ever seen Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels before? I have seen Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels before. Oh, okay. John, have you seen Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels? <laughs> 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 I've not two seen snails? that. No, 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 I've never seen that. Mate. I thought you were going to say Two Smoking Barrels. Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. I've never seen uh, Two Lock Stales and Smoking Marijuanas, but I, I, I believe that I might have seen Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. I'm not 100% sure. Pretty sure I have. Have you ever seen Two Snails Smoking Barrels? <laughs> two, two Snails Smoking Barrels. Big old joint. <laughs> Mate, they slow the fuck down. Uh, yeah. It's a gangster film, isn't it? Obviously, it's going to be a gangster film. Yeah. Do you want to give us any more of a prediction or anything? What else could... Okay. It's it's, it's uh, set in a warehouse. You've got things that are in stock. Yeah. In barrels, <laughs> aren't they? Fucking it's, it, it's It's a warehouse of... It's like the Yale locks yeah, warehouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they yeah. store the locks inside... In the stock room, yeah, inside the barrels. <laughs> and so it's a film about, like, the distribution centre. That's, yeah. that's what it's about. It's like a, like the office, but they just sell locks. Yeah, just locks. Just the lock, I don't the know why they're smoking. <laughs> I've <laughs> got nothing. <laughs> There's, nothing. No to that. There's no answer to that at all. All right, let's fucking watch the film. Yeah, let's watch it. <laughs> And we're back with a couple of fast thoughts, gangsters. Fuck off. Easy geezer. Not even a thing. I just said that because I panicked. <laughs> Did you notice that? It's not even in the film. I just went, easy geezer. Is that your panic twitch? That was like, that's what happens when someone comes up to me and asks me like, a tough question. And I'm like, easy geezer. And then I nut him and I leave. That's, that's all I can do. It's like hands on the shoulder. You just turn around. <laughs> easy geezer. Wait, wait, yeah. So, uh, can I start again? Because <laughs> I absolutely fuck that. I'm imagining honest. you on your wedding day. You've got the nerves. <laughs> like, do you, John? <laughs> easy, geezer. Easy, 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 geezer. And I'm not the priest. And I'm out the back. That's it. No, your wife. Your bride to be. Oh, banging the face. I could do that. Yeah. Yeah, run out of the church. The priest is the, the authority figure, I guess. So oh, I guess. I'm going to go for him. <laughs> well, I see how that works. Uh, playing cards. It's been emotional. Bren gum. Ganja. Northern guys. Scousers is what they were. <laughs> uh, stealing guns. Pawn shop. Porn. 
Dildos. <laughs> Paddles. Well, well, this is descending, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to a dark place. Oh, and you ready for the classic? Yeah. Shit dads. Shit dads. Of course. Shit. No, I, I, think, I think he was a great One dad. shit dad. One shit dad. No, he was a, well, he was a shit dad then. He was oh, a shit dad. I think both of the dads were good in that I film. think all the dads were good. Yeah. No, they weren't. Oh, Vinnie Jones was a great dad. He was Vinnie Jones. A... And Sting. Sting is just Sting, isn't he? So he can't be bad. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> That kid. He was saying, are you in the clear? More importantly, am I in the clear? Yeah, well, he just fucked his dad, didn't he? Mate, he done a silly. Oh, we can, we can get onto this. Let's just okay. go for a while. Yeah, right. Okay, so do you, <clears throat> you want to do a 15-second <sighs> pitch? Christ alive, am I going to be this? This is going to be a bit of a shit show of a 15-second summary of what the bloody hell happened in this film. And it's going to be really difficult because it's all like it's all over the place. But you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. Whatever I try and do, I'll just try and keep it within 15 seconds. You ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Basically, there's these guys, and he's there's one of them who's playing cards. He fucks it. He has to pay loads of money, and it's a film about how he gets um, the money to the, the the geezer. Everyone dies. There's loads of random plot points. There's guns, and that's about it. 16 seconds, wow. 0.85. Wow. Do you know what? That's not even that shit. That was if, quite good, actually. If you hadn't started with that two second... Basically. Basically, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Basically mate. It's going to be a okay. hard one to do an actual synopsis on. I but think. let's give it a go. <laughs> but fuck me if that's not what we're about to try and do. <laughs> okay, you've got uh, Eddie the Gambler, Bacon, who is the hustler, Tom, who is the entrepreneur, and uh, Soap, who is the chef. Yes. They are four bezies and uh, you've got Eddie, who's the gambler, who uh, get convinces them all to get raised like 20, not like 100. 25 grand each. Um, yeah, yeah. Bring so it to the table for a 100 grand pot for a gambling game. And a, a, a card game. Because. For, for poker. <laughs> Is there any more clarifications about they, 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 they use hands holding. to play it? <laughs> now, the reason why Eddie goes and does this is because he's a prodigy when it comes to gambling. But someone else, so the, the main bloke, Harry... His muscle, who is called Hatchet Harry, Hatchet. Wait, no, no, no. Hatchet no, Harry, Hatchet is, Harry is the yeah, guy. But I don't know. Boss. I can't remember. His, what his, 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 his number two. His name's Paulie. What's Paulie. Oh, maybe. I'm feeling. I'm guessing that. Sad, now. Isn't I'm it? feeling. I'm picking that. Big, yeah. big. No, I'm making that up. Big John. <laughs> big baldy <laughs> gazer. He's a fucking shit house. He's a bit. He's a yeah, brick shit house. And so anyway, so he, he's the muscle, and he's watching. He he's like rigged a camera so that. He can see Eddie's cards, yeah. and he fucking Morse codes it to. Mm. Uh, beep, 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 beep. Yeah. Thank you. He Morse codes it to uh, Harry's leg whilst he's playing. Uh, so, because Harry's cheating, Eddie fucks the game and ends up owing Harry, who's this big uh, porn lord. Uh, like he doesn't do the porn; like he he sells the porn and he has a strip shop and whatever else and blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, he ends up owing him five five hundred thousand pounds, and so. Which he has to pay within a week. Yes, otherwise he's mm. going to lose... Everyone within their little posse is going to lose a finger <clears> for every day that they still haven't paid the money. So their so, next door neighbours are just general crims. Who criminals. Are dodgy, <laughs> Shaky, criminals. Dodgy, dodgy blokes. Dodgy <laughs> yeah. blokes who just do nasty things to make money on the side. Yeah. And there are some... Are they, and one of them, his name I think is Plank. Yeah. Yeah. Plank yeah, yeah. knows nice. the... Uh, Knows the dealers quite well. He picks off these toffee boys, these sort of poncy students types. Yeah. And um, they, so plan, they plan to rob him up. Yeah, they've got like this whole massive uh, weed farm going on. Yeah. And they're and they like, but they're proper unorganized, and they keep all their money in shoe boxes. This and is so <laughs> basically, um, is it Eddie? Yeah, yeah he is this like so he can yeah, hear from yeah, where yeah. in their flat he can overhear in like the cupboard oh. through the vents their next door neighbors talking about how they're gonna like. Uh, rob, rob these guys, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So their plan is to basically just like follow these guys and rob the people who are robbing rob the, the people. people who are robbing yeah. the people. Yeah, um, that's what happened. End of film. No, I'm joking. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean that's, that's pretty much it. Like, <clears throat> so let's fill in the gaps. Like, one guy goes down to like deal plank some weed, and mm. plank's like, "Why is it closed?" He's like, "That's what we do now." And then he like plank grabs the guy and with a, and then got a gun, and then he's like, "Blah blah blah." blah. The rest of them come in. The guy that comes to the cage originally, the weed dealer, ends up getting shot in the foot. And whilst they're like, let us in or we'll kill the rest of him. <laughs> I'll kill him bit and, uh, by bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, kill him till he's dead. And then uh, <laughs> they, so they let him in. Uh, they take all the money. 
um there's like a bit of a situation with some guns like people mm. people die on the bag on the criminal side they get like shot and and then end up, they end up leaving um and they're like out of the van the, the criminals this is and then when they're going to the like to get back to their little place their office where they operate the main gang they're like they they situate themselves so they're already in the office ready for them so when they come in they're like <clears throat> rush them and then like take all the stuff they go to, do they go to hatchet harry at that the, point the important go, they, thing though the important thing is that they they bought the guns off nick the greek before then yeah so that's something i don't Two think we've guns. even mentioned the guns no, we've not even mentioned no. the guns and they're quite an important bit in, yeah. in the end which is frustrating because it just throws a spanner in the works because i i it was does, happy to yeah. end yeah. the synopsis when you <laughs> said end the film i was quite happy to do it can bad. someone else explain this because yeah so yeah. basically I, I'm hatchet I'm harry wants this. hatchet harry um has seen like um there's some guns for auction which are worth two hundred fifty thousand. Um, but he doesn't want to pay 250000 but he mm-hmm. knows where they are. So he tells his main number two man, the big guy, and he is like, he's like, get me those guns. So the main big number two guy is like, okay, I'll go and get, he gets these like scousers and then they go to rob the place, goes a little bit south, but they end up getting the guns. They sell them to Nick another the Greek. guy. Yeah, Nick the Greek. And then Nick the Greek sells, sells them to, to the, the, the main gang. Yeah. The main gang. To use Robin next yeah. door neighbours. Yeah. Basically, no one knows the value of the guns except from Hatchet Harry yeah. until right at the end of the film yeah. where they find out about the value of the guns. Whilst one of the guys in the main gang is about to throw them off a bridge because Aww. this is the only thing that still links them to the case yeah. after everything's blown over. But we end the film, the very last shot is seeing the guy who's trying to throw them off the bridge he fails to throw them off the bridge because it lands on a ledge and he is he's got the phone in his mouth the guys are ringing him to say don't fucking throw him off the bridge because they're worth 250,000 pounds yep. and but he's also trying to knock him off the bridge to just get stop implicating themselves mm. so and so we don't actually know what's going to happen so there's two more sort of like groups of people that are important that we need to mention which is um I can't remember what his name is, but Vinnie Jones's character, he gets hired by Hatchet Harry, is it? I think he's to... actually it's basically he's actually Harry's lone lone man. Yeah, yeah he goes, he goes he Chris, he Chris, big Chris, big Chris, yeah, big Chris and little Chris. Okay, oh yeah, yeah, okay. oh, yeah. yeah, and he has his big son, Chris and little Chris, and he, that's and his it. Son yeah, is with him all the time. Yeah, yeah. So he's <clears> like in the picture um, and trying to get the money and stuff that Hatchet wants. The other group or the guy is like this black guy with an afro who has who's also sort of like a uh, some sort of criminal-ish boss. He goes to see criminals and there's like a shootout which ends up with basically everyone dead. Because he clocks... Because it was his weed. He bought yeah, the weed, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, because yeah, he yeah, bought yeah, the yeah. weed and there was yeah. some funny business that went on with the yeah. weed. Is there anything else that we need to I explain? I think that's basically Yeah, it. that's kind of it really, isn't like it? Like I said, it's kind of hard because <clears> it's like lots of different stories all happening at the same time to culminate together to make one like linear thing but also it's... i remember how much of a fucking shit show the big lebowski synopsis was yeah and we <laughs> basically finished this and i don't want to go any further yeah, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. because this could go so much longer yeah, and worse. okay we'll call it there then um so any issues with the film at all guys yeah i had some beefs okay beefs, yeah. let's unravel those beefs i just thought the acting at right. points, was a little bit fake. I mean, obviously, it's acting. Um, um, I mean, I know that's the point. Ooh. I know that's the point. But like, it, it just looked really. You wanna, have you got any specifics? Mm. So in the in the first scene when they're like, um, no, n- not the first scene. One of the first scenes when they go into the shop and uh, they, I th- can't, I think it's Nick the Greek buying a hi fi, off <laughs> yeah. off of so and so, and 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 just the, the dialogue is is it feels very forced. Yeah. Like, and the lines were very like, all right, mate, what's the matter with you? Oh, nothing's wrong with me. What's what's the problem? What do you think it is? Oh, you put on a bit of weight, haven't you? Hey, shut it, you two. Let's go to the back so you can buy something off me. What do you mean? This is premium quality price. That that It, it, it was very like, I don't know, like it, it didn't feel natural to me. So who's the director of this? Guy film? Ritchie. Guy Ritchie. Yeah. Yeah, that's just Guy Ritchie. It's just like every film's just like yeah. right. So yeah. blah 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 blah. Oh you found him but and a bum but <laughs> that's the sort of two things you associate with Guy Ritchie films is that kind of dialogue between you know proper cockney geezers who barely talk any English at all and yeah. then weird backdrops which is meant to be London but none of it really looks like London right. does it it looks yeah. like some sort of weird town in sort of Shropshire yeah 
And lots of yeah, all shots the gobble, as well. And lots of fucking that. jazz flute all over the place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, exactly. much jazz flute. You can't tell me that you didn't enjoy this soundtrack. Hmm. When it was <laughs> when, <laughs> when it was songs, I was like, okay, mm. I like the songs that was going on here. But when it was the the random pieces of music, it felt like when we'd watch some Indian films and they just chuck in some random music behind a scene. <laughs> Yeah. It was like, why Why is there? The 1998-ness of it does show a little oh bit. Oh, my God. Yeah. So much. Yeah. But then I don't think there's many more sort of successful films like this. Like, this this was the first one. You know, like, these gangster it, kind of... It really set a time. Like, London yeah. gangster kind of films. I didn't enjoy it when, on the subject of the soundtrack, I, the, Robbie Williams, at the end, just felt really out of place. That was one of the last <laughs> tunes. I remember that bit. Yeah, like I mean, it was not one of his well-known. It might have been a single that he had at the time, but it was. It was like, why it is Robbie... right Angels then, or no, not not Angels or or Rock, Rock DJ, DJ. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or any of those. Can you imagine that at the I end. I think it'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, they all just burst into dance. Yeah. It's like full bon- like Bollywood. Bollywood yeah. <laughs> no, no, but it just felt. Surprised really... there was no sting or police or like anything like that. I mean. Uh, probably, probably couldn't afford probably it. Could only <laughs> yeah. just couldn't afford, afford the license. <laughs> yeah. It would have made sense if it was Roxanne because she the whole, the whole you don't have to put on the red light. Yeah, would have made mm. sense with with porn with porn being a Harry person with Harry being a <laughs> porn person. <laughs> um, I had an issue with uh, the fact that the guys that sold the weed, like fair enough, they were like they 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 weren't like in the game, you know, like they were they were like very posh lads. Yeah, but they had a BB gun. And I feel like if you've got that quantity of weed and you've got like a gate to like stop people from getting in, mm. why do you not have an actual gun? Because they explained that. They said they would have been calmer and stuff, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Well, they had an air rifle. That was like the, the harshest mm. they went, which is, which is a glorified BB gun. It is, right. yeah. It's not enough. Yeah, but that's no. what they said because they're sort of pop hippie boys, isn't they? Who believe in karma, so they, you know what you do upon becomes upon you. So oh, they, they can't hurt shot, someone properly. They? <laughs> they did, yeah. Well, they got, yeah, well I'm not saying it's clever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying they did explain it. That downstairs area of their pad, though, yeah. that, that was the nicest area <laughs> yeah. of their place. It was because what, the bit with the gate. Yeah. It's, it's huge. Well, bit, I mean, yeah. It, yeah. It's wasted space. A massive yeah, wasted space. Massive, like old, like. Almost like a... Uh, like a barn, if you Yeah, like me. a barn. That's two and a half grand a month in London. Converted, yeah, oh yeah, it, it costs an arm and a leg. Like, like, that's like a converted <laughs> church kind of thing. What kind of real estate in London? Are you joking? <laughs> you having a laugh, boy? <laughs> just a gate, just a bit of metal, that's all you're putting in there. There's 12 tenants in that room, mate. No, oh, they're all about that minimalist shit, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, but upstairs it was all fucking bohemian, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, it was a bit well, they, were just, they were just junkies, yeah. yeah. They were yeah, just junkies. It was gross. But kudos to them. They can keep downstairs clean and they can keep upstairs. Easy to keep downstairs <laughs> clean when there's nothing in it. <laughs> yeah. You just give it a sweep and you're done, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, it's literally... Keep your house clean by having nothing in it. <laughs> yeah. One sweep and you're done. Yeah. You know, you can, like, it's like that Netflix tidying up series, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like, I should just do a show just like tidying up with Jordan. Get rid of all your stuff. <laughs> sell just your, throw sell it all flat. away. Sell your flat and you have nothing yeah. to tidy. <laughs> Live on the street. <laughs> They, tidy they, they have people that they pay to clean those. <laughs> Get your own maid. Yeah. Any other beefs? Yeah, the d- I don't like Sting as the dad. No, it's not. It's not Sting being the dad. I just mm. thought he was a dick. Like, sure, mm. sure. Like, your son's done a stupid thing, mm. but when there's the conversation of, all right, it's it's your it's your like so to, to, in order to repay uh, his son's debt, uh, s- someone comes up to Sting. And he's like, uh, Atchet Ari is interested in your bar. Mm. And so he says, it, all right, so it's either your son or the bar. You have to decide if you want to save your son or the bar. And uh, he doesn't specifically answer the question. No, but I love it. He's just like, <laughs> it's not his bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's got nothing so to do Ari with it. Go fuck nothing. himself. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, I just don't really think... Put yourself in Sting's shoes. Yeah. Say you have a kid who's like, what is Eddie? He's got to be like mid twenties at 30s, least, isn't he? Yeah, like yeah. And he's perpetually, from what we can kind of gather, like has some issues around gambling and mm-hmm. cards, and has got into trouble before. Mm-hmm. So imagine you've got a son who's like late twenties to thirties, 
who's constantly having issues with the wrong kind of people, with gambling, and then he does something that gets your bar, which you fully own, into like the debt of a gangster. Are you going to be happy about that? But he's my, no, of course not. But he's Are my you, son. Isn't yeah, he? but I mean, I think you can forgive yourself yeah. for calling your son a bit of a cunt and give it a bit. Of a yeah, <laughs> but I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, not going to basically give him a death sentence, though. Am I? No, he didn't say but that. He didn't. You know. don't know what Sting was did. doing behind the scenes. He could have been wheeling yeah. and dealing, trying to get the money for him, or you know. Sting really only appears in the beginning and the end. You don't really see him part. I mean, yeah, if, if push comes to shove, maybe Sting would have actually just given him the bar. We never mm, got to that point never because known. he did because yeah. Eddie was able to sort it out. I'm just surprised that Sting is is doing such a lowly job as a barman or, or, <laughs> he or, or, or he's a not, bar owner. He owns the bar. The yeah. uh, the other guy is he's got a barman. He just owns it, doesn't he? Yeah, but you know, like because of the fact that it was Sting and the fact that we keep calling I don't him think Sting, being a barman is a lowly job as well. That was a bit of a low blow. Oof. But it's Sting being a barman. It's... Yeah, but he's not Sting in the film. Is but, we're call- <laughs> but, yeah, but we're calling him Sting, aren't we? We're calling we him Sting. Yeah. We should probably yeah. stop and, calling him Sting. And, and, I, can't, I can't get that out of my head. No, he is know? only ever Sting. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Else. So, How weird is it that he calls himself Sting? The weird Apparently guy. it's because. Do you know what, what the story no, is behind this? Yeah. So when he was um, in the jazz clubs in, News- in New- Newcastle, in uh, Newcastle, when he was growing up like back in the 70s, uh, he was just he would just always play jazz um, on his bass. I didn't even know that. No, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, he, he was a proper jazz guy. And uh, fucking our lecturer in uni, Paul. Yeah. He like w- went into jazz clubs in Newcastle and saw Sting playing jazz. Oh, okay. That's cool. And he was wearing, apparently the story goes that he was wearing a yellow and black jumper the whole time. And that he was always wearing a yellow and black jumper. And that's what gave him the name Sting. <laughs> okay. That's a bit disappointing. It's a bit, it's a bit, <laughs> shit. It's a bit, it's a bit shit, isn't it? it and he came like down to London. He's like, I'm yeah. Sting. Yeah. Wow. And started and stopped playing jazz and started playing in rock and roll bands. Do you not make of, you feel uncomfortable? Though? I'm very, I feel very uncomfortable about Sting. What band? What, what it's band? his tantric sex stuff that he does. It really creeps me. He out. does tantric sex. How do you not know this? Sting's know. like, yeah, he's, he went to like India and studied like um, the Karma Sutra for years, and now he's, he has sex for like twelve hours. So tantric, yeah, I was about to say. So tantric yeah. sex is like this thing where you basically have sex for like a ridiculously Hours, prolonged half a day. Of time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Long time. I mean, if anyone's got the time, it's Sting. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 also maybe um, that's how we got the name Sting. Maybe. <laughs> what? Oh no 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 no! I do. Uh, oh, uh, no. After twelve that? hours of sex, she's gonna sing a little bit. Isn't uh, it? Oh. No, but the, I think the the point of ta- tantric is like it's non penetrative for a. For like it's all right. sensual, the longest isn't it? time. Yeah. It's all weird. Oh, okay. I hate saying sensual into the mic. <laughs> <laughs> not, yeah. Imagine anyone listening to this has just cringed completely yeah. in their soul now. I'm sure that's anyone that was like scared of being cringed out by me or Kieran has long since left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They're yeah. here for the long run now. That ship has yeah, yeah, sailed. Yeah. Uh, a person at work told me that um, she listens to us on the in the bath. Oh yeah, yeah. She's nice. That's, that's a thing. Well, um, I think you have different kinds of baths though. Because you have, you have baths where it's like I'm in here for 15 minutes, and then you have baths where it's like I've got the candles, I've got my wine, yeah. I've got wow. I've got my book and whatever. Mm. You know, if your colleague is sitting down with the bath, well, like we're sitting down in the bath. Um, yeah, if if your colleague's putting an armchair inside the bath, <laughs> or, or, or you know, like relaxing with the soft light in and yeah. like the like in a different speaker yeah. than she's got us coming out. Then you just kind of got to question her motives. <laughs> Is it a she? I'm presuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, I hate baths. You, yeah, maybe I, I hate baths. Yeah, it's such a waste of time. It, Literally, should not be for anything other than pleasure. Yeah, it's unless really, you yeah. don't have a shower, mm. unless you can only bathe in a bath. Mm. I've got a mate who's like that. Yeah, no, yeah. It sucks to be him. My, yeah, my yeah. girlfriend used to live in her, lot, her flat. Of, only had a bath. A lot of houses do. It's so inconvenient because he has to have like a bath. I mean, he enjoys it. But if it, I, that would be a deal breaker for me. Not, I would not go in that house at all. Fuck that. Because See, that's, every morning I have to have a bath. That's what? the thing. Like what? she'd take baths and they'd just be, it would just be like just water. A convenience bath. Like obviously like you're using all the stuff that you need yeah. to wash, but like I can't have a bath without bubble bath. A be- a- <laughs> has, what do you mean you physically I can't. cannot get in a bath <laughs> if there's just water. Why? That's not relaxing enough. I'm like, my brain oh, so is has like, to be a level of just relaxation. have a shower. Well, yeah, 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 that makes sense. Because well, it, if you have the option, but if you didn't have the option, would you get into a non-bubble bath water? 
If, yeah, yeah. If I didn't have the option, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Because it's, it's, that's what happens. Because it's like it's a time thing, isn't it? You yeah. just want to have your bath in the morning or in the evening. You like you just get. You're just actually just washing. You're not doing it for pleasure. A convenience bath is a complete oxymoron because it's like, <laughs> you, like the the point of a bath is luxury. You can't you can't have a bath quickly because you have to fucking no, wait for ages for the thing though, to fill up. Kieran, that's what I'm saying. Is is it, it should be it should be just luxury. But there are some people that can only have a bath. And when you can only have a bath, you're left with no other option than to make it just a necessity. Oh, how did we get here? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know where we started talking about. So that. one of the <clears throat> the beefs that stuck out to me was right at the end where John was saying where he's oh it might have been you Kieran was saying he sticks his phone in his mouth whilst he's trying to get yeah. um why. Why do, I, no, like, no, 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 because, because he's going to fall out his coat. Yeah, he's going to fall out of his, fall out his coat. Down somewhere. How's like, he going to put it down? He's hanging off a, he's hanging off a bridge. Put it down by your feet. Or by the no, bridge. because he's already off he's already hanging, hanging off the bridge off by the bridge. that time. Yeah, but put it down on your feet on the sidewalk. No, no, you... On the sidewalk? But he's hanging on, so his left hand was hanging right. on to a yeah, little yeah, pillow. Yeah, I get where he is now. Yeah, so how's he going to put it down there? Because he doesn't have to, like, he can't. How? What? Shut up! No. No. He's, no, no, no. This argument's falling apart. This argument's falling apart. He's chatting rubbish, no, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the good right. thing about three people on an episode. He's standing. He's standing with the guns, yeah, right? Yeah. And then yeah. he pushes them off. Yeah. Right. Well, yes. And they're yeah. on a ledge. Yeah. And then he looks over and he's like, "Oh shit, it hasn't fallen." They're on a ledge. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, "I'll take my phone out, put it in my mouth, and then no, that's not what he does. No, that's not when he does it. That's not when he does it. He leans out. He leans over first to grab the guns, and he's like, "Okay, I'm leaning over." Oh wait, my phone's in my pocket. I, I, I'm not gonna like stand up again now yeah. and then put it in my other pocket. I'm not pavement. sure. I'm not sure if I believe you. That's what I happened. think he puts his phone in his mouth first. No, no but regardless, no, no. regardless, no. my because, point is because he's hanging because it rings when it's in his mouth and he's grabbed the guns. He's got one hand on the right with the guns and one hand on the left with a pillar. Yeah, so it rings when it's in his mouth. So how could he done it otherwise? But no, that's what I'm saying. He should have just put it on the floor before he like because he's just you're just gonna drop your phone. <laughs> like you're just gonna drop it in the water, like it's not. Yeah, but regardless guys, of whether you're gonna, I'm not I, saying he could have answered the phone. Do you know like, what? I'm just you? saying it was a stupid thing to do. But like, the guy's not the sharpest. Yeah. He's not the sharpest one said anyway. So, so that there's there's no way that he would have had the foresight. He came up to... with that really smart idea of um, like what is it? The, the selling the sex toys. I haven't got any more beefs, but I just wasn't satisfied by this film. I've got a couple of beefs. Okay, okay. I'm honest. Right. So one of them was the Scouse guy. Yeah, he had a bit of a sort of weird time when he got done by the uh, the big baldy man in the Atchett's office. He just turned a bit cockney for no reason. Oh Which really? One? I don't believe that guy's scouse, mate. That's all. The big, the one with the dodgy hair. Right. Yeah. What? When he ran in and so he gets whacked in the back with the Atchett. He turns around. Oh, yeah, and he yeah. goes, "What the fuck are you doing here?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I did hear that. Actually, I did hear that. Yeah, 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 I did hear that. But I was wondering. I, 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 I thought. Am I? No. Am I? I feel like am I? Have I just heard so much Cockney? Right now, so. <laughs> Maybe because he does fuck go. Are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Any yeah. colloquial accent. By the way, for anyone who doesn't know, Scouse is the uh, slang term for someone from Liverpool. My last beef is that there's no fucking scenes of him playing cards outside of Harry's den. I want to see if he's actually good. Yeah. He might be shit. Yeah. So this is he the, might be shit. This is something I was going to bring up in the brings in in the B. Sorry. Mm. So. His whole thing of like, oh, the, he can fucking smell out anyone and their bullshit. He's the best with body language and yeah. all of this, blah, 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 blah. We see yeah. when the fucking big guy it taps, 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 taps Morse code to Harry and Harry receives the message mm. that so-and-so's got fuck all cards, right? We see his pupils dilate or, go, or get smaller or something. Right. That is surely something that a prodigy of body language and, and understanding people's messages and stuff is going to see. Mm. So he would see that there is some kind of a sign that lets him know that there's some either some funny business going on or that person's got cards that are a bit better than mine or something like that. And surely Eddie would know. So he wouldn't even get yeah. to that point where he's betting crazy money because he's like, oh, well, I, I read it by, by looking at your pupils. As surely well, he would know that. He was tapping on the table along with the... Uh... And Morse code that was tapping on his leg. Yeah, wasn't why that couldn't suspicious? He notice? That's weird, isn't I didn't it? Why you did? That. Yeah, mate. You see, there's a little scene where he's like tapping his fingers. Like, I mean, they, they that's dumb, isn't that. it? That was proper <laughs> suspicious. Yeah, how suspicious is that? I yeah. think that was that pissed me off. I was like, surely I thought one of you two were going to bring that up, but clearly I'm going to table a bunch of amateurs. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've got to save some for you, to be fair. Um, did we have any bits and bobs? Yes, I do. Yeah. 
Uh, there are two tits for the genitalia tap. Oh, wonderful. Oh, I only saw one. You saw one? I only saw one. One, one singular boob. Um, it's uh, it was during the sexy dance. Um, when I thought there was, more I thought you were talking about pairs. Yeah, no, like it, it, when when we count them, it's individual, individual ones yeah. because you might see only one of the boobs. There's a lot of side boobs in films. Side I understand. Boobs. So side boobs just, it doesn't doesn't count. And uh, and the same with balls as well. It's like <laughs> because you might just see one ball. Mm. You see, okay, but you don't need to see two penises to count as. One penis. One penis yeah, is one penis. Well, that's because, exactly. Because usually there's only ever one penis. Plural. Yeah. There's never yeah. really penis. You don't see much peen. Peen eye. No, no. <laughs> the most, the most, the most peen we've seen in a film is during Train Spotting when there was two. Yeah. Going back to the, <laughs> going back to the boobs, Solid if pee. we can. Um, <laughs> there were plenty more boobs throughout the film, but they were all in picture or all like drawings and whatever and adverts and telephone boxes and stuff, and which you've already said, Jordan, doesn't count. Has no. to be actual no, it has actors. To be actual. <clears throat> with, human, with, with, human. Well, I mean, all humans are paintings, I guess. Yeah. It's not dog, like, dog it's not boobs like, don't count. Not like dragon no, 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 boobs. No, no, no. It has to be live action boobs. <laughs> live action. Live, animated boobs. Live action role playing boobs. <laughs> live action boobs. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm yeah. going to love some boobs, guys. <laughs> <laughs> were, we just, were we just all thinking about tits right. at the exact same time no I just don't it's know like, I don't know if you can move on from the phrase let's larp some boobs <laughs> I don't know where you go from there that's kind of throw so, it in so I found out that it seems that there's a lot of things that my dad says that are from this film oh yeah and I was I was thinking that too <laughs> there's like just so many parts that just reminded me of my dad like initially right at the start when it's the um, when they're haggling over the system and it's just like does it come with an amp no it doesn't come with an amp but then like two seconds later it's just like and it comes with the amp yeah no it doesn't <laughs> come with the amp. Just like, I could just hear my dad just like so it come, that TV comes with the stand yeah no it doesn't come with the stand okay so um, you're going to throw in some of that stuff yeah no 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 we're not going to but the stand comes with it <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that is your dad all over the other one is uh, it's been emotional he says that all the time the and chill Winston he literally says that all the time really yeah yeah. I think we might have discussed before I don't know when but like I really like it when people finish off a conversation with a really succinct um, like really succinct like uh, just an ending of the conversation <laughs> and it can be something nice and polite like good afternoon so like uh, or, or, or it can be quite like blunt like good afternoon sir and then you storm out of the room right I, the Cockney version is evidently now fuck off mm. or just fuck off. Yeah. yeah. So like you give loads of directions, blah, 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 fuck off. And I just really <laughs> love that, that like signing off. Yeah. This, this, this is me. End of the conversation. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> if you had BBC your News phones, tonight, yeah. this has been Jordan Deere. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just liked all of the fucks. I think in, in mm. like Cockney fucks are better than, than most fucks. Yeah. For yeah. example, when little Chris says, Wait, Little Chris, isn't that a rapper? It yeah. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> he died, uh, mate. Little Chris died. What? No he? way. Yeah. So you got Big Chris, Little Chris, welcome to our Cardboard cafe. Box. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Your joke was better than mine. Yeah, that was good. Um, and uh, is yeah. that Big Chef, Little Chef? Yeah. <laughs> oh. You took the PG version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kieran's been eating his CBBs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, there's this moment where they go into this tanning salon and they're, they're questioning, they're interrogating a guy. And um, uh, because Big Chris is like, where's all, where's all Big Harry's fucking money? Or he doesn't, doesn't swear in front of his kid. Yeah. But then little Chris goes, fucking hell. Which is absolutely yeah. love. He's got at least a monkey in here, Dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah their relationship's brilliant. That and is. then right at the end when he's just... Like absolutely slamming someone's face into the side of his do- <laughs> of his car with a car door, and you're just like, and little Chris is just sitting in the side. I'm like, oh, that's not good for a child. <laughs> no. Yeah, but he tried to kill little Chris. He know? did try and kill little Chris. Not but great. Then for he proceeded yeah, to like yeah, just right. smash the guy's brains in. I feel like if that's little- your dad, you've seen worse already. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. So, how did we feel about Rob Brydon being in the film? Loved it. I, I totally Bryden. forgot he was Oh, in it. Rob Bryden. Rob Bryden. The, the traffic warden. Traffic warden. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Very, like, minimal part, wasn't it? Yeah, but it's important for me. Mm. I have a Welsh character in it. I, I felt I like, felt like, like is, was... he, is he still up and coming at this point? I don't I, think... I don't know. Oh, no, well, no. I think he's it pretty, it's, it's, pretty situated in, in the yeah. world at that point. It's before his... Probably big BBC One break, but I reckon he would have done some shit before this time. I think, right. be, I I think he'd know. be known. He was pretty big in like the eighties and nineties, I think. Oh, right. But it just felt weird because he's like, he's too nice to be in this film, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, he's too nice. I mean, I guess Traffic Warden would be the most passive character you could have 
for, mm. for Rob Brock. If you were going to cast him as anything, like he, he wouldn't fit in in any of the gangster <laughs> stuff. So you have to have him be as a, a, some kind of authority. But like, it's a fucking traffic warden. Who cares about traffic wardens? Wow. wow. I mean, that's that's wow, that's Kieran. what their attitude was. Wow. That's what Kieran's their attitude really was. Going for the the lower class jobs. Yeah. Today. Hey, First oh, bartenders. Jesus. Now the, now traffic wardens. Have ambition, people. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, wow. Jesus. Oh, I'm what? So, so people that are traffic wardens don't have. That's it. I just like to say. Kieran's registration plate is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imagine getting doxxed on your own podcast. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! When you control the editing. Yeah. I need to get a new parking permit for my place. I might not get one now. Yeah. Oh Shit. yeah, you're screwed. You go into. I'm the... sending a letter to the union of traffic wardens. <laughs> Annual general meeting for the traffic wardens. Oh, oh I nicked this proper guy. Oh, oh he was really angry. Oh, oh. twenty pounds a parking ticket. Hold on, Steve. Just remember, you're a warden. You didn't nick anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they, they, they probably have some lingo, which is like yeah. their equivalent of nicked, but they can't say nicked because all the coppers are like, you're fake. Like, I think <laughs> my mum and dad referred to them, like they, there was a specific name that police call traffic wardens or yeah, something. Yeah, I yeah, know what it's, it's like a pretty derogatory. <laughs> yeah, all those places have slightly derogatory. Anyone anyway, slightly below. Or... <laughs> In, uh, when, we, when I went to Jamaica, there's like the police outfit. There's like two... And one is like for a regular policeman, it's just like this blue stripe, mm. like down the trousers or something. And then a traffic warden is a red stripe. And it's just like, it just makes it really obvious when they're a traffic warden. And it's just like, mm. just like this is the uniform of zero respect. <laughs> <laughs> the target. Almost. Yeah, literally. It's just just like so everyone knows that's the kind of person you can oh. ignore. In France, you have the gendarme and then you have the police. And it, I think... I, I what think, are they doing? Then? I never knew the difference between the gendarme I and the police. I think I know what the difference is now. The gendarme is like for your run of the mill stuff. Like, uh, oh, my place got burgled. Can you come over and check out my place, please? The gendarme, right. come over. Mm. Or like the civil stuff. Or but the police is like, there's some shit going down. Yeah. So when that's when the big Ninos come out. Just like, ringing the phone, just like, <laughs> hello, French police. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, my house has been burgled. Has anyone died? No, no, fuck off then. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy. How serious is your crime? <laughs> the person I would be is uh, Eddie, and I would read the pupil cues of right. uh, of Harry's pupil cues. Because for me, it's like when the narrator was... Oh, because that's another Guy Ritchie thing. It's like really basic dialogue, ca- Cockney accents, and a narrator. That's right. why I get the guy which he is. Um, when, the, when the narrator was saying, um, Eddie's been playing cards and she was able to lift him up. Um, it, it's like, okay, if he's that sick of cards, he would be able to read people's eyeballs. Mm. That's what I'm saying. And so I'd be Eddie and read the eyeballs better. Right. That's who I'd be. Uh, who are we going to go first? Uh, uh, Jordan or uh, Yeah, no, I'll go. I would be um, the, <laughs> what was the, the entrepreneur of the group? The way you say entrepreneur. The entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. What, the entrepreneur. Who, who entrepreneur. The entrepreneur. entrepreneur. Yeah. Like manure. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. Sure. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd be him and actually contribute something to the group. Yeah. If you he seems like out, he was definitely the weakest link out of all four. Because Soap was like, bring. He's at least he's a chef, but he seemed very like clued up and was like. It brings a voice of reason. Yeah, he? he does. Yeah. Uh, Bacon seems like he just like. He's he's a guy that can kind of get stuff done, and then Eddie's obviously like the poker player and got like some moves there. But I can't even remember exactly. I can't even remember the entrepreneur's name. He's is he not the one who uh, comes up with the plan with the dildos? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, yeah. but that that shows how much of an stuff. idiot he is because that's like four weeks that it says <laughs> yeah. it'll take to get a return on, and they have a week. No, because I swear he he like isn't it his place that they that. They're hiding out here. Nope. It's Ed's, Who's, isn't it? Yeah. Ed's place, place. Yeah. yeah. He's the neighbor. Okay. He really isn't contributing much at all. Not he, really. He no. just helps in like the robbery bit. One thing that the entrepreneur does is he has the shop and he sells the electronic goods and all that stuff. Oh, is that his shop? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure, yeah. So he sells an, a, a thing he's, at he's, the start of the he's, film. He sells stolen to someone else. electronic goods, doesn't he? Right. And also, is he, is he the one? Isn't he the oh, one? Oh, he who buys the out? guns. Yes, yes. Yes. He buys the yes, guns yes, off yes, Nick yes. the Greek. So yeah, I suppose yeah, yeah. he applies that sort of connection. It's not really that much, though, because he mm. fucks up too much, doesn't he? Yeah. John, okay. have you got a B? Uh, I was thinking, but I don't... Who's the guy who... Uh, the, the proper... 
He's the director, mate. Winston, mate. I'll be Winston. Oh, That's what I nice do, one. mate. Thank well you. Done, Thank you. Oh, you <laughs> shouldn't even see that. Oh, you see the eye. Oh, fair Very play. Quick, fair and play. Yeah. quick and witty. Quick and witty. Fair play. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was pretty good. You. You'd be Winston. I'll be Winston. Who's but Winston? I wouldn't be a twat. He's the one who... Um, Shield Winston, you know, the guy who runs the weed farm and has all the money. Yeah, but then yeah, yeah. <laughs> he does everything you could possibly think wrong. I'd just do that but not be a twat. Yeah. I wouldn't just have a, I wouldn't have an farm. air gun. I'd have that lock and an actual gun. And not smoke all the weed. And not smoke all the weed <laughs> and have junkies around me all the time. Yeah. I don't make money. Well, well no, because the sensible one. <laughs> to make money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not No, no, because no, wait, because the, the one who wasn't stoned all the time, he was the one who yeah. had his head screwed on. Is no, he, was, he's he not Winston, also is he? was smoking as well. He was smoking as he well. He just was more... Was he, he, was he Winston or not? Yeah, the main yeah, guy. The main guy who runs the shop in the in the weed place. So what well, I don't understand why Winston just didn't like get get rid of the people who were being exactly, shitty. exactly. So yeah. Just, well, well just it just seems to be off. his only mates. Yeah, he hasn't got he hasn't got any connections to the dirty underground, and he says that when he goes into meet with um the guy who he sells yeah. the weed to. I can't like we're not gangsters. No, we're not gangsters. We're we're, 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 we're yeah. It's literally we're, farmers. we're like horticulturalists. It's like ironing yeah, ironing, ironing, money, ironing yeah. the fifty pound notes. Like yeah. fucking yes, that's well up my street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would totally yeah. like ironing yeah. money. Yeah. Could you do that these days with the plastic money? But you couldn't. I think you could. Well, you can't burn it, so surely you can't. You can iron it. I guess not. What do you mean you can't burn? It Doesn't it? burn, mate. Doesn't burn. No. But, but the money from back in the day, it's not everything like... burns <laughs> <laughs> in the end. In the end, <laughs> some men just want to watch. Some the, notes burn. The, 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 the but the money back in the, before it became plastic. Yeah, uh, it, it's made out of cotton. That's that's like the original mm. material of. It's not paper. It's it's cotton. Oh, okay. So that's might have been why they were ironing it because they were like, oh, part of the laundry. Yeah. Put it yeah. on a slow spin, <laughs> thirty degrees. You know, think about the environment. You just had a really hot summer. So is, that how, is, is that actually how you? Uh, is that actually how you lunge the money? Yeah. Hey! <laughs> That's how you do it. Yeah. Chuck hey. it in the washing machine. Hey. Eco wash thirty minutes. Iron it out. I'm just imagining. <laughs> I've just, lunged them in money. Don't like, worry, boss. Police raid. They're just going. Yeah. yeah, we just caught a massive laund- uh, money, <laughs> money laundering. Where was it? Uh, in a laundrette. <laughs> but, yeah, it was. They, they, it was their money. To be fair, <laughs> they, they had earned it, but they're not allowed to use the washing machines. <laughs> <laughs> the owner asked us to remove them from the premises. <laughs> 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 who would you bring Jordan uh, I was really happy with this one um, okay so don't really know I want him to have a little bit more going on than what he does in the film at the moment I'm change. I'm swapping out actors basically okay that's uh, what I'm doing with the I can't remember what his name is either the black guy with the afro I want to say Nick no it's not Nick because that's Nick the Greek Rory, Rory Breaker Rory yeah um, I'd swap him with Alan Johnson from Peep Show I don't know who those people oh, damn, are. damn, I'm gutted. You know Johnson from Pete Pete Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So I just want him in there because like Johnson is this like super intense black businessman. Mm. Drives okay. a Beamer. is very like, yes, Mark, but can you put a screw on the pooch? And he's like very like, <laughs> we need to do the business, Mark. Have you got the right type of asshole for this kind of business? <laughs> and I just want him in the film like, but is the weed good? Because if the weed is not good, Okay. I'm not buying the weed. <laughs> you know that so, scene where he puts the drink on the table and it smashes? Yeah. And before he could be like, pour me, pour me another drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, was, I thought you were going to bring in Samuel L. Jackson from the guy he plays in the first Kingsman movie. Who, like, I hate that character so really? much. That is Samuel L. Jackson's worst role. Really? And he was in Jumper. <laughs> what, what, oh, so, wow. so, so why 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 do you hate that role so much because it's like super goofy and like he puts on this lisp yeah and he's always wearing a snapback yeah and it's like who the fuck are you how are you doing Phil? like kids? why have you why have you cast samuel jackson in a role that is not yeah. meant for samuel jackson he's in his 50s yeah <laughs> but yeah. this is like i could almost like see will smith playing that role like it's like it's yeah. almost like will smith from the fresh prince of bel-air and yeah. that's not samuel jackson <laughs> yeah but the point being is that you had someone with the amount of prestige as samuel jackson to 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 like juxtapose it no it didn't work <laughs> <laughs> well, I like I like how Kieran offered like a really nice insightful thing and John was like now nah, fuck off <laughs> it's alright you can both I'll bring someone sometime. okay you know in uh, The Hangover yeah when uh, Zach Galifianakis' character is playing Blackjack 
Yeah. And you've got oh, yeah. all the numbers. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I don't want him as to Ed. do... As Ed. I just want him to do that scene. All oh, right. You just, just have him as another person in that thing. Oh, well, that, no, no, because... Not cause, even the main guy. Just well, no, no, because him replacing Eddie, like, they would, he would have won the game. Mm. Like, sure, <laughs> we were playing the wrong game. It was Blackjack and not poker. But, you know, he could probably work it out. Just, he just needs, needs to cram Texas poker for, like, a, a fucking hour or so, and then jobs are good. And... Yeah. Well, so but, he would win. Yeah, but it might it would just be fun to have him at that table. Yeah, just as another person. Yeah, yeah, that that would be that would be fun. Not say a single thing, but <laughs> <laughs> just but, be there with the numbers going on. <laughs> <laughs> but to finish the film in fifteen minutes, which I like to do sometimes. Okay, I would have him be Eddie, and then he would win all the money, and then jobs are good. Right. Who would you bring, John? Yeah, so I've had a long time to think about this, at least three and a half minutes. Um, <laughs> and my initial thought was actually Danny Dyer, just because oh, he's so on brand yeah. and he's such a poor actor that it yeah. would really make it quite brilliant. It would really fit in. I quite don't know well. who I'd switch him for. Well, you don't need to switch him, you could just bring him in. Just bring him in? Yeah. I would switch him probably. I'd probably switch him for um, the chef. I feel like it was a bit negative, yeah. really, a bit boring. What, still like playing the chef role? Like, still- well. I'd be Imagine Danny Dyer character. trying to be like a straight character. <laughs> the, the chef was really no, because you you can't. That's legal. <laughs> if he was in, if he was in it, he'd be like one of those guys who thinks he's turbo hard, and then Vinnie Jones would just nut him every ten yeah. seconds. He'd, no, he'd yeah. definitely he'd, <laughs> he'd be a henchman, I mean. wouldn't he? He'd be a henchman. Yeah, yeah. He'd, no, he wouldn't. He'd week. be a shit henchman. He'd be one of them. He'd be the lad in the group that'd be like, oh yeah, let's just go in there and rough him up, and then actually Harry just bonks him on the head yeah. and he's done for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you not think that? Uh, I don't know if Danny Dyer would sign up for a contract in a. In where he, gets bonked, where he just gets bonked on the edge. Like, <laughs> right, basically, Danny, you play a shit henchman. Danny and you get Dyer would on the sign edge. up. He'd sign up to a film for a packet of peanuts. So he's, he's, he's got nothing going. <laughs> wow. <laughs> See that Danny Dyer beard, this man. <laughs> I felt like the uh, the chef was very Steve Buscemi like. Really? Anyone else? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Get that, get that. I, yeah. I just felt like if any, if there was an American version of this film. <laughs> then, then he, Steve Buscemi Steve, yeah. would play, play. I like that actor though that played that played him. Yeah. He was quite good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but I just thought his character was just a bit dry. Him himself, the he, actor was good. I yeah, liked him. The, yeah, the character. His lines supposed are supposed to be dry, isn't he? It like, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get you. Okay, Jordan. Yes. Would you stay indoors to watch Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Brows? Yeah, definitely. I love these kind of films. If you like these kind of films, then yeah, you should stay indoors for them. All right, John. <laughs> John, would you stay indoors to watch Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Brows? Oh uh, yeah, hundred percent. So this for me, growing up where I grew up, is this a staple of mm. uh, of conversation. It changes your language down to people have been saying these yeah. these lines and phrases since I was a nipper. Well, there so. you go. Exactly like I say, where my dad has been saying it's emo- it's it's been emotional. Yeah, and, exactly. And uh, it, it, chill, Winston. Like since yeah. lot for as long as I can remember. Was this the first time you saw it then? No, it wasn't the first time I saw it. But oh, I okay. think I just. I'd forgotten that. Do, do you know what? I had, was 110% that I'd seen it a million times and I'd put it on. I'd be like, I know this film in and out. Why do I need mm. to watch it? And and I'd watch it. I was like, I don't remember this. Yeah. But I know all the lines. Because it's, simi- that it's very similar <laughs> yeah. to the other types of films like this. Isn't it it is. All... Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. is. But I enjoyed it nonetheless. What about you, Kieran? Would you stay indoors? Nah. I mean... Uh... See, that's what happens when you're from Milton Keynes. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of stuff. You're not that and, the extra, for it. that and the extra toes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. No. Well, no. I just it's I I I like to, I like to what yours what you're presenting as like what <laughs> as what as the reason why you like it. Yeah. It's just for me like the the dialogue pisses me off because it's right. it's so I understand. like I don't I feel like Jason Statham that is like the extent of his acting capability. Like absolutely. Like it goes, it goes, yeah. it Jason goes, Statham has never played anything other than a bald hard nut. Right yeah. there you go. So it's like the, maybe it's Vinnie really Jones. Yes, it, 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 it's uh, it frustrates me that it's just like oh by the way, how many women spoke in this film? There was no women. There's one woman. There there Tanya, yeah, one woman and she counted Tanya. cards, and then a the woman who shot someone. That was right, it. Yeah, right. I think that was it. I don't I'm pretty sure the woman that shot someone didn't say anything. She did. She said boo. Oh, did she? Yeah, when oh, when yeah, yeah, Plank like tried to kiss right. her. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so so there was like I just. It was very much like a film for blokes, a blokey film for blokes. Very, oh, yeah. Where the acts, where, and that's one the thing. The target market is blokes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but when the acting is like, I wasn't taken by it. it. It felt a little bit like it would be a really impressive stage production. I think <laughs> it, it felt like it was like a like a, a nice film version, a well done film version of a really clever play. 
So it's uh, it's a bit self like masturbatory for um, for Guy Ritchie as well because it's like oh I'm so fucking clever look at how clever this whole plot line that I've, that I've, that I've written is same with Lebowski it's like it's an incredibly clever uh, clever it's an incredibly clever plot line <laughs> you're incredibly clever <laughs> <laughs> it's an incredibly clever plot line and and they can sure like I can't write that shit like you've got to think ahead and think and all tie the knots in all different ways and all that shit. <laughs> I can't fucking do that, but it doesn't, it doesn't, I was about to say it, it doesn't cook the beans for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that this phrase is used. It's an original. I'm not sure right, it is a phrase. <laughs> but I, no, I, I, I like what you're bringing to the table, but it just doesn't cook the beans. <laughs> does that not sound like so something that exactly, could be said? That's what I'm saying. It's you're rubbing like, off on it's, me. It's, yeah. It does like, not filet my mignon. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> it does not doffin worse my potatoes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I do agree with you, though, Kit. I actually 100% see where you're coming from, to be honest. Because I think for people like me, it's, it's an absolute novelty item of a film to see mm. someone yeah. who... Because uh, nobody actually talks like that around where we live. No, not really. It's just it's, they've it's, seen that and they've adapted to, yeah. to be more like that. It's, I think because being from Essex, you get like a lot of bleed from London and well, Cockney. Yeah, huge you know, amounts. Like, yeah. And, and it, I huge think amounts. no one... No one in Essex is actually Cockney. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, yeah. towards the further out of London Anymore. you go, you know. Yeah, but then yeah. you still have that, like it, it sort of echoes out as it as it goes. Certainly, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Also, that Cockney thing is is very much because London's become so much more diverse mm. in the past twenty years. Yeah, like that that real Cockney gangster yeah, thing not, is, is not <laughs> really. A nah. thing. You don't see any Cockney people. Apparently, <laughs> the most. The most Cockney it is like the, the most Cockney place you can be is like uh, Aldgate. Like there's some yeah. very oh, really? Aldgate Whitechapel. There's some super Cockneys there. Okay. And that's yeah. pretty much it. Like you still got some Cockney. It's East London, isn't it? Sure. I mean, that's where we sort of, we grew up just outside of East London. Yeah. And that's yeah, where like, that's where all the people from East London when they got a bit of money they left London and moved into Essex and bought bigger houses. Mm. That's all it was. Yeah, yeah. And that's why all the Cockneys live there now, and all the families anyway. And that's why they try to emulate the past, but no, really talk like that anymore. No. It's dead. a shame. It's not. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So there you go. That's that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's go home it. and watch Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels well, unless you're Kieran. Unless you're Kieran. There you go. Unless you're a And you can join us <laughs> next week when... I, I think, John, you're joining us next week as well? I'd be honoured. Oh, lovely. Oh, that's lovely. cute. That's good. So <laughs> we're, for guy we're Richie's... reaching in for another guy... Oh. Oh. oh my oh, god! And watch it. <laughs> that made my skin hurt. Oh man, that was horrific. Yeah, reaching uh, in <laughs> for Jesus another Christ. guy. And uh, yeah. yeah, we're going to be watching the sequel to Lock 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 Smock and Two <laughs> Lock, Smoking Plan. No, Lock Smock no, and Two it, Stocking Barrels. It was wasn't it Lock. Oh, was it two smoking, oh, no, two, two, two marijuana two, smoking two, snails or something? Two That's, what we started. Marijuana. That's what we started. We yeah. Well, the much simpler named Snatch is the yeah. film that we're going to be watching next week. So join us for that. See you later. Bye. Chat to you, bye. That's the end of the podcast. You can email us at 250reasons at gmail.com. You can subscribe to us on, on ACAST. It's Podbean, Spit, Spitcher. <laughs> <laughs> subscribe to us on Spitcher. Spit roast my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and you can send an email to 250 You've already done that. We'll see you next week. <laughs>